So moving along with some wiring. Next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to run 12 gauge wire from the power supply to this and that's going to hook up to the ground that actually goes out to um, real ground so that these guys can rest properly. And I'm using 12 gauge wire. I'm going to strip the one side. I'm going to get the spade. Get my crimper. See, now this is not the ground that's going to be feeding the power supply. This is the ground that's going to go from the power supply to the bus. So it's going to come from the outlet to the power supply to the bus and then from the bus to the two surge protectors. All right, so I want it to be about that one. The green wire. Strip it. Spade. Okay, now now's a good time to do a continuity check. So I set my voltmeter to this setting right here to do a continuity check. So if I connect here to here, I should get a tone. Right? And it doesn't matter where on this bus bar, because they're all, it's you know all fused together. It's all the same thing. Okay. Now another place I'm going to do a continuity check. You see here's the V plus terminal on the fuse box. And if I go to negative, nothing. If I go to the negative terminals, nothing. If I go to the positive terminal terminals, see that? I get tone. That also verifies it's going through the, um, the fuses. This is 10 gauge wire, 10 gauge wire. Okay, I got this from an AutoZone or something. And on the back here, you see, this is 10 gauge. The reason why 10 gauge is important is it can handle up to 30 amps. Now, I'm not going to be pushing anywhere near 30 amps to this, but I like to be conservative. Okay. So, on the one side of this, I'm going to use this kind of a terminal right it has a little eyelet so it will not come off unless something really really bad happens you see there's a little yellow dot on my my crimpers and so i use that for this guy we just squash them real good come over here to my fuse box and i have this v minus terminal so I'm just going to take the nut off the top and the first washer. And then I put the washer back and then I put the nut back. Make it snug. Okay. And what I do is I just trace the path back to the power supply like this give it a the other side of the camera here okay I'm going to V minus right in here so I want it to be about this long now you can get spades 10 gauge spades they're also yellow but the problem is they won't fit in here. Okay. And that's a problem. Yeah, you got to, it has to fit or else it doesn't work. But no worries. 
A lot of people argue that you don't want to be doing spades at all. You can get a good connection just off of the, um, the wire itself. Where'd my so undo, loosen up one of the screws, and you're gonna put it in right here. So that we get a nice tight connection. Okay. And of course this guy's not slipping out at all. 10 gauge red wire. Strip an end off, fish hooks, or eye hooks, whatever they call them. Grip it for the yellow. First washer. And then we fish the wire around. This time to V plus, which is right about there. See, and these thicker wires are feed, feeding the fuse box. If your wires are not thick enough, they'll overheat and then they'll start to melt. And then bad things happen from there. The only other connection I need is actually hooking up the power supply. Okay. Now, Obviously, I'm going to need to run connections from here up to the second story, which is going to, you know, hold all of our boards. But this is the, the basic wiring. And this will hold me very nice. Nothing's going to move. Nothing's going to short. There's plenty of copper to pass the amount of current I'm going to need to be passing. So this is a nice, solid first story. Hi, I'm John Storms and welcome to Crotch Cam. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be preparing this extension cord or this cord for uh, use with my uh, power supply. Uh, I like high gauge uh, power cords, right? So I'll chop these off old surge protectors or vacuum cleaners, that sort of thing. And then I got a drawer full of them, so when I need one, I grab one. So the first thing I got to do is I got to strip off the the a little bit of the outer casing so you usually do about two or three inches and i'm just using a pair of wire strippers here just the little cutting tool at the base give it a couple passes and the trick is to cut the outer coating without cutting the the coating of the wires on the inside so i cut it enough that i can kind of bend it and as i bend it it kind of splits apart see that and then i just Get it enough where I can slide it off. See? Sometimes they have a powder coating. It's probably terribly poisonous. So I like to give them a little flick. And then each one of these are about 12 gauge wire. And I take, I don't know, about a quarter inch of the coating off. Of each one. See, my wire cutter, my wire strippers have the, the gauge of the wire and you just pop it in the hole, clamp it, give it a pull. And so now I have three semi-bare wires. The white one needs a little more. So we'll just grab a little bit more of the white. Okay, now what I do, I'm going to grab me three spades. Get my crimpers. Give you each these guys a little bit of a spin, like that. See, then we spin it in like this, and we give this guy a crimp. Like that. Okay, so then we have this spade, and we give him a crimp. Just like that. All right. See this? So they each are, have a spade on them. They're all nicely crimped. 
So let me swing this over like this. And now you can see the power supply. Now, I usually don't run the extension cord in for its final setup until I actually have this in the box, but I want to test out the power supply. All right, so let me put the ground in here. And I don't trust myself, so I go and actually write on my power supplies the color coding for the wires. I know what they are, but, you know, I don't trust myself. And in a moment of forgetfulness, I don't want to make a mistake. Okay. And white is neutral. Boom! See? They're all there. Okay, so now I go to plug this in. Now, when you plug this in, you you got to be careful because this is going to be hot, right? All right, so it's plugged in. You see the little green light come on. Now, let's do some checks. So I'm doing this so I can test my power supply. So I got my multimeter. I'm going to move it to this setting, 20 volts, and I'm going to measure the load here. So red to red, black to black. And look at that. I got 12. 12.1. 12 now if I didn't like that number, I would adjust it. There's a little screw here. And I would hold these on and I would take a little screw driver and move it one way and then the other ever so slightly because it's super sensitive to make sure I was getting the uh, the voltage out that I wanted to. Now, if you come on to here and you find that you have to turn the little screw all the way to get the voltage and it's still changing, you could be looking at a bad power supply. All right, so the other thing I want to do is I'm going to test it right here. So this is where my main terminal is going to my fuse box. Can you see that? I'm still at 12 volts. Now, these are positive, these on the side, and then these along here are negative. So I want to test this out as well. See? Well, I actually got more voltage, 12.02, 12.02, let me try it on this side. All right, so it looks like it's working. So anyway, so now I know my power supply is outputting what I want, which is important because the last thing I want to do is put this whole thing together, put the second story on with all the wires in place, and then realize, oh, I have a bad power supply, and you got to rip it all apart. Um, so this design of power supply is not easy to replace. I mean, it's doable, but there's a lot of pieces in the way. So I just do the one power supply. Some people will put four in here or because each, each extension board needs two power supplies and the main board needs two power supplies. If you're going to max things out. Um, but that's not how I do things. I, I do power injection. So anyway, I'm going to unplug this. 